Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In this video here, I'm going to help you a ton. We're basically going to go over the most common issues with YOLV8 and the Autolytics framework. So we have a bunch of different common issues that we're going to go over and also to see how we can solve them. So we're basically going to go into the documentation. I'm going to show you where you can find that information. And I know from my own experience that sometimes we're just sitting down, we can't figure out a bug, it's just not working. We're sitting there for several hours trying to debug something and then you can just fix it with a single line or just a single modification that we wasn't aware of. So let's just jump straight into it and let's see how we can save some more time and also a lot of headaches. So right now, let's just jump straight into the Autolytics documentation. We should go inside the Guides tab. So of course, our common issues will be under Guides tab it will, and it will also be the first one over here to the left, as you can see. So this is very useful if you run into any errors during the installation, when you're trying to run in inference, if you're trying to train a model, if you run into any errors, definitely go in here. I'm going to show you how we can find this information. So we'll see how we can troubleshoot common YOLO issues. Again, I've tried this on my own. For a lot of different frameworks, even with Autolytics framework, I've run into some issues and errors that I really wanted to be solved. And sometimes it can take like hours just trying to figure it out yourself. If you don't know where to go get the information, could be on the GitHub error section. So you can go inside the issues on the GitHub as well, just to see if some other people have the same issue and if it has been resolved. Or you can go inside the documentation here under the guides tab, YOLO common issues. You can see the table of contents over here to the right. So first of all, we have an introduction, common issues for some installation errors, model training issues. We can also do model predictions, so issues related to that. And you can see all of it. Over here, you can scroll through just to see if those are some of the issues that you are running into. So often the best fix to most issues is basically just to reinstall it. And again, it is really easy to do with Autolytics and also YOLV8 when you're using that model is just pip uninstall Autolytics and then you can install it right away. So we might have a new update out trying to solve some of the issues that you have run into and also some of the errors. You might be on an earlier version, which is not really working anymore. So definitely just try to upgrade your YOLV8 version and Autolytics framework library to start with. So we can just go through a couple of examples. I'm going to show you how we can see the error and also the solution and go through this documentation. So first of all, we have the installation errors, which could actually be multiple different things, but we have already covered just trying to reinstall it, but it could also be because of your Python version, could also be because of your PyTorch version. If you have CUDA installed together with PyTorch, if you have CUDA on your environment as well. So those could also be some of the errors. Could also be that you're using virtual environments like Conda, Python virtual environments, and so on. So basically just make sure that you're resolving all of those issues. So first of all, we just get a quick overview over like what is the error, and then we go down to the potential fixes. So that could be like a fresh installation, update regularly as we already talked about, check dependencies, review changes, and so on. Could also be CUDA compatibility, PyTorch version, environment activation, updated packages and so on, but we already covered that. So one of the issues that we run into when we're doing a model training is that we have our YAML configuration files. So we might not specify the exact configuration in the YAML file and those are being applied correctly. So then we can go down, we can see the error, so verification of configuration settings. We have the issue, just a one line here describing the issue that we have. And then under that, we have the solution with potentially a couple of steps. So here we see that the solution to this issue is basically just summarized here. So first of all, confirm that your path to the YAML file is correct. And then down here at the bottom, also make sure that you're actually calling the correct argument and setting that YAML file equal to our data argument. So these are some of the common issues. Again, if you're not using the correct argument, you might run into a lot of issues. So we're trying also like to make it as easy as possible. So you only need to specify a couple of arguments, both on model training, inference when you're doing predictions and so on. And then you can just like run model training, set up whole pipelines in just a few lines of code. But the only thing that you need to be aware of is the act like names and the different arguments that you can set in these functions directly. So these are some of the most common issues also why they are on the top here. So here we can see that we're trying to address an issue with training on multiple GPUs. We can see the sum of the solution. So again, make sure that you have multiple GPUs available, modify the YAML configuration file. So we can specify the number of GPUs and set that to four, increase the batch size and so on. And then just like monitor and also modify the training command to utilize multiple GPUs. So you can set multi underscore scale equal to true. So again, all of these things here often comes down to the arguments. So the function arguments that we can directly parse into it. Continuous monitoring parameters. Again, I won't go into the details of 
all of these but again you can just read the issue see if that is actually like an issue that you're running into or an error you just go through the table of context get a quick overview let's say that we have some errors with filtering objects in jolv8 predictions let's go in and check that so we have an issue facing issues with how to fill and dis display only specific objects in the prediction results when running jolv8 using the autolytics library so now we can see that we have a solution to detect specific classes using class argument to specify the classes you want to include in the in output. For instance, to detect only cars, assuming cars have class index two, could be depending on your data set. If you're training on a custom data set as well, you need to make sure that you actually like have the class for the correct um, class index as well. So here we're just running a single line in our command line. We want to do segmentation. Detection here is our task. We specify the model. The source where we want to do the inference we want to show true and the classes we set that equal to two. So that is actually like how we can do filtering with our YOLOV8 predictions. So that might be one issue that you run into. It could also be understanding the precision metrics in YOLOV8. So we see the solution here. It's basically just describing what those metrics are that you want to take a look at when you're training your own optic detection models. Could also be extracting optic dimensions, GPU deployment, model conversion, exporting issues. So once you have trained your model, how can you export it if you want into any issues? Because when we're exporting models, it is often using other frameworks. Could be ONNX, OpenVINO, TensorRT, and so on. So here we have a bunch of issues that you can run into. And we also have a bunch of different solutions that you can check into. So it could be like environment resets, could be dependencies that is not compatible, just compatible check for different dependencies. So when you're using like TensorRT, you need to have like different versions. ONX need to match all of these dependencies. The frameworks need to be matching versions. So definitely check that out. That is one of the solutions. Restart your environment. Official documentation for the frameworks that you're trying to use. Export the model into. There's also a ton of community support. And again, if you run into any issues, it might have been resolved in the newest versions of Autolytics. We're always updating the whole framework and the GitHub repository. If you don't find your issues in here, if you want to just get the latest issue, you can also just go into the GitHub repository. So if we just go inside the Autolytics GitHub repository, you can also go in here and try to solve your issue by going into this issues tab and you will get the most recent one. So we can see that this is open 15 minutes ago, three hours ago, four hours ago, and so on. And here we can see the issues that people are running into now, most likely with the newest and updated versions of Autolytics. So if you're just running into some issues now, it hasn't been resolved. You can find it in the documentation under the YOLO common issues. Try to go in here and check it out if someone else has already resolved it. If not, definitely just go ahead and create a new issue in here and we will fix it for you, update a new version of Ultralytics, and you can then get started running it in your own applications and projects again. So I hope you have learned a lot in this video here. This is really helpful and can save you a significant amount of time. At least it has for me, both for Autolytics, but also a ton of other frameworks. It is really good to know how we can resolve issues when you run into it. If you get any errors, how can you fix those errors so we can keep developing, keep writing other code. We don't want to sit and spend hours on trying to solve an issue which has already been solved by someone else. So definitely go ahead and check it out. Be familiar with how we can use these tools. And then I'll just see you in the next video, guys. Until then. Happy learning.